I want to preach or teach really just a simple thought. I, just no points really. I just got one thought, and you're looking at the, the, the main point and the initial point throughout the entirety of tonight's service. And it kind of goes hand in hand with our message from this morning, speaking of our identity and how do we identify ourselves. And, and ultimately, the, those of us that are saved in here tonight, we identify with the Lord Jesus Christ, first and foremost, and, and our stability is found only in Christ. And once we find that stability, this, uh, this morning we said once we find that stability in Christ, then we're able to serve. But I want to help you. Let's go a little bit further this evening and maybe just remind a lot of us, as every now and then I need this reminder, that we are more than conquerors. I want to help you this evening, and we're going to dissect these few verses. And if you can stand, if you would stand just for the reading of the, of the Scripture here this evening. And we won't read but just a few verses in Romans chapter number 8. Romans chapter number 8, verses 35 through 37 is where we're going to get our text from. And I began to think about this, and, and I talked a little bit on this at the rest home not too long ago, being more than conquerors. And I even, I even told them then, I said, man, I said, the Lord's going to have to turn that into a message. I'm going to have to preach that. And then, lo and behold, I didn't know how soon it was going to be that I was going to get to bring this message. But I'm excited to bring so unto you tonight. And may we leave tonight with a little bit of encouragement tonight. You know, we turn on the news and we get disheartened very quickly. We listen to the radio too often long and we get disheartened very quickly. But I want to, I want to tonight maybe just give you a spiritual booster shot, amen? Just a little something to get you by because we're not having service Wednesday, so you got to last all the way to Thursday, all right? So maybe this will, this will just resonate with you just for a little bit throughout this week, being more than conquerors. Romans chapter number 8 Beginning in verse number 35, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long and we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Verse 37 is our text verse. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. The one that loved us when we were sinners. The one who loved us enough to pay our sin debt. The one who loved us enough to go all the way and endure the cross. The one who loved us. Hmm. Nay, in all things, we are more than conquerors through him. You can be seated, let's pray, and then we'll jump right into it this evening. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I pray, Lord, that you would use me once again. Lord, I stand in amazement of every time that we open your word and dissect it and pull things out and apply them unto our lives. I'm standing in amazement of your mercy and of your goodness and of your greatness to each one of us. And God, I pray, Lord, that you would help me tonight deliver unto your people the message that you laid upon my heart. Lord, help me to add every illustration, take away that which you do not want said tonight. And God, may every verse of Scripture tonight just resonate in our hearts and in our minds. And Lord, may something find a lodging place in our minds and our hearts, Lord, that we can meditate on it throughout the coming week. Lord, understanding who we are in you. And God, we love you. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to be back in your house. Now help us now in the remainder of the service. Hide me behind the cross. May Jesus be high and lifted up. In Jesus' precious name we do pray. Amen and amen. I want you to look back at your text one more time. These three verses of Scripture, and, and I want to pull something from verse 35 here in just a moment. It says, who shall, notice the verbiage here, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. But I want you to back up to verse number 35 for just a moment, and I want to show you something that stuck out to me, and, and I just want to hit this in passing this evening here as we kind of lay down some foundation of uh, being more than conquerors. In verse 35, we see that first word. What's that first word with me? Say it on three, one, two, three, who. Now, followed up behind that, we see some verbiage and some questions. 
It says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? So we understand the question, who is going to separate us from the love of Christ? Now, the question was who, but then if we look at the answers that follow, they're not a who. None of them are a who. None of them are a person, if you would. Shall tribulations or distress or peril or famine or nakedness or, or peril or sword. None, none of those are a who necessarily. They're not necessarily a person, if you would. And it's interesting when we see that in, in, in this passage of Scripture in Romans 8, 35, we see that the, the Paul lists out tribulation, distress, and persecution or famine, nakedness, and peril or sword. But it's an answer to the question. It's an answer to the question of who shall separate us. Who shall separate us? And then we see the answer that rolls out here uh, that, that Paul gives us. You normally would think of these things not necessarily as a who because they're not people after all. You would think maybe, well, maybe the translator's messed up and, it's, and it should read what should separate us. Right? I mean, as you're reading the Word of God and as you read this, but I want to remind you that I believe Paul put that in there for a specific purpose and for a specific reason. As we understand the who here, and the reason why Paul, I believe, puts the who there in these things, and it says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? All these seem destructive. All these do not seem very good at all, and they're all destructive toward us, and, and all these things are aimed toward the separating us from the love of Christ. But get this, it's not necessarily the who that he's talking about here, but it's a greater who in whom we serve. That's the comparison that we see. That greater is he in whom we serve. He's a greater who than these who's. I'm not an owl this morning, this evening. I see some of you already giggling, amen? <laughs> but get this now. Get this. I don't think, you know, Paul puts this here, first of all, because these things that come at us, they don't, they, 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 they don't feel inanimate. And sometimes it really does feel like a who. Someone's always coming after us, those that are persecuting us, those that are coming after us and attacking us. But Paul also wants us to set up a contrast with a greater who, and no matter who you have against you, you got to understand that you've got a who on your team that is greater than the who on their team, and his name is Jesus Christ. Because we just read about who it is that makes us more than conquerors. And it's the Lord Jesus Christ. And I love that little comparison there. That's just a little side note as we began to build this up. And God is stronger and he's not just going to defeat those things that are going against us. But yet he is going to make us more than conquerors over those things. Now when you get this idea uh, of, of being more than a conqueror. More than a conqueror. Now, we, we, we understand the concept of conquering something, right? You, you move into a battle, if you would, or a challenge, and, and you conquer that or you overcome that trial. It's, it's a conquering effect. You have dominion over it, if you would. You, you've, you've overcame that challenge, and now you stand higher than that challenge once was standing up against you. It's, it's a foe that you go up against. It's, a, it's an enemy that you, that you encounter, but you win the battle. You've conquered that battle. And many of you, you've heard this statement, conquer your fears, right? Uh, some of us are still working on a lot of our fears. I mean, you pray for us. Amen. Listen, if you're afraid of heights, I, I hate to tell you, but one day we're going to go really, really high. <laughs> we're going to take flight out of here. I believe that in that moment we'll conquer a lot of fears. But we think about this idea of conquering. We think about this idea of conquering, but this idea of more than a conqueror. And I came across this quote, and I love the way they described it. A conqueror defeats his enemy, but one who is more than a conqueror subjugates his enemies. A conqueror nullifies the purpose of his enemy. One who is more than a conqueror makes the enemy serve his own purposes. A conqueror strikes down his foe. One who is more than a conqueror makes his foe his slave. Now hang on with me here as we dive a little deeper into this idea of being more than a conqueror. God not only delivers us out of our sufferings, but he also makes our pain and our suffering serve his purposes. In 2 Corinthians chapter number 4 and verse 17 through 18, for our light affliction and compared to Christ, no matter what we suffer, persecution, peril, or nakedness, or sword, 
endured is light compared to what Christ endured for us, taking the sin of all of mankind upon himself. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and, and, and eternal weight of glory. Verse number 18, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. And what Satan means for evil in our lives as he comes up and as he causes his wiles to distract us, to deter us, to, to slow us down, and what he causes as a stumbling block and as temptation comes our way, God will use for our good because God uses those attacks to work in us an even greater weight of glory than what we would have experienced without those trials and tribulations in our lives. Romans 8, 28, a very familiar passage of scripture for many of you. And we know, and we know all things work together for good that the, for them, to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. And there are many illustrations of the Old Testament of God miraculously bringing victory to his people Israel. Humanly speaking, Israel was no match for many of their enemies. And if you would study your Bible, you would understand that, that they had no chance in and of themselves to win the majority of the battles that they came up against. But God cautioned them to not be afraid that he would fight their battles for them. A few verses here in Exodus 14, 14, the Lord shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace. The Lord told Jeremiah that he was bringing the armies against the rebellious Israelites as punishment for their disobedience. But even then he reminds them of this in Jeremiah 1, 19, and they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee for I am with thee, saith the Lord to deliver thee. And also in one instance, in one instance, an entire army fled their own camp when God calls them to hear the, the sounds of a great army coming and the famine-wracked Israelites were able to plunder the enemy camp and provide for their own families through no act of their own. And you can find that in 2 Kings chapter number 7. But not only were they saved from the approaching army, but they actually benefited from the threat. Get this now. They benefited from the threat that they were more than conquerors. Not only did they conquer, but they were more than conquerors. Why? Because they benefited by God already giving them the victory before they even battled it out, before they even fought. Now, Satan is our adversary, and he sends all kinds of life-defeating, joy-stealing attacks to threaten the well-being and faith of God's children. Many of those attacks are listed in Romans chapter number 8, verses 35 through 39. We just read a lot of those, tribulation, distress, and persecution, and famine, and nakedness, and peril, and sword, and, and you can go on down through there and read those, and we will here in just a moment, but many of those attacks listed there that we see, and Paul's encouraging us to do something. He is encouraging us to do something. He is encouraging us to stand firm in our faith through those attacks, though those attacks do come, reminding us that not only will we win in the end, but Jesus enables us to win now. You see, we're more than conquerors. Why? Because we know we already have the victory in the end. We read the book of Revelation. We understand our position in Christ, and we understand where we will stand in the end. But as we journey along, as we journey along, there will be trials and temptations and things that will come in our way, but we have to lean onto a mightier who than is going up against us, and the mightier who is the Lord Jesus Christ, who will never leave us nor forsake us. He goes with us all the way, and he allows us to be more than conquerors because of him. Not our own strength, but through the Lord Jesus Christ. I love this quote I read from Abraham Lincoln, be sure your feet are in the right place, then stand firm. I believe as Christians, we could all uh, adhere to this a little bit here. And if our feet are planted firm on the foundation of Jesus Christ, and as we said this morning, our identity be found in him, then nothing can remove us. Because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. You have to understand something tonight, that you have something inside of you that the world cannot, cannot go up against because it has already been defeated by it. You already have the victory. You will have already overcome all these things through the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Satan lacks the power to steal our eternal destiny, and he cannot and will not be able to separate us from the love of God. Look back in your text this evening here in Romans chapter number 8 and verse 35. We're going to read down just a little bit further this evening, but who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Now hang on with every word that's being said in verse 36. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. But hang on with me. Hang on with me right here. Verse number 38, he kind of transitions into a statement, into a stand, if you will. For I am persuaded, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Jesus Christ our Lord. Do you understand what we have in the Lord Jesus Christ tonight? Do you really grasp a hold of this idea that you are not only just a conqueror, but you are more than a conqueror, not because of your own strength and not because of your own ability. Oh no, but it's because of the ability of the Lord Jesus Christ and everything that he has conquered. You say, well, what did he conquer? Hey, can I remind you, death, hell, and the grave, just to name a few, amen? Listen, he has already overcome all those things. Listen, that we don't have to, that makes us more than a conqueror as long as we identify in Christ. What a thought this evening. I'm almost done. Don't, don't pass out on me now. I, I told you we're going to be long. But I want you to get this. What shall separate? Who shall separate us? And then as Paul begins to list all these things that come at us, and, and we can fill in the blank with a, a lot more. Each one of us in here tonight can begin to list out the attacks on a daily basis that come our way. And those things that the devil sets up for us, those little snares. Can I take a time out and, and just run something right quick? Stop listening to the devil. Come on now, stop listening to the negative. Listen, if a thought comes in your mind, we are to take captive those thoughts that come in our mind and analyze those thoughts, whether they be of God or of not. And if they're not of God, if it ain't good, it ain't God. If it ain't good, it ain't God. Mama says if you got to do it at nighttime, you probably shouldn't be doing it. And mama's right. And if a thought comes in your mind that's bad, guess what? It ain't of God. God, I told our teenage class, God will never, God will never lead you into sin but always make a way for an escape. So we need to stop entertaining these ideas that the devil plants there, the wiles of the devil. And that's why the Bible reminds us in Ephesians to put on what? The whole armor of God. I mean, to put everything on that we need, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness. We put on all these things. Why? So we can withstand the fiery darts of the devil. We can, uh, we can withstand all of his wiles and all of his attacks. Because if we let one little thing come in our mind and we begin to entertain that, what happens? to us is we get down, we get discouraged, we get depressed, and we get in a state where we don't even want to be used. We get, a, we get this mindset that I am nothing, I am nobody. Listen, I hate to tell you, but we is nobody apart from Christ. But thanks be unto God, we're made a new creature in him. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. We began to talk about this, and we see this laid out for us, and how are we more than conquerors? Well, we're more than conquerors through him that loved us, and the him is Jesus Christ, and because of what he has conquered, and we find our identity in him, therefore that makes us more than conquerors with him and through him. Now get this now, nothing we face worries God in the least. I don't know if you realize that or not, but nothing we face worries God in the least. And if we are his children through faith in his son, then we have his pledge of love and protection. In John chapter number 10 and verse 27 through 29, you see that right there on the screens. Jesus said this, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man, mm, 
neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Listen, no matter what happens, no matter what goes on, no matter what struggles happen in your life, you need to understand something that no man can pluck you out of the Father's hand. Get this now, and I give them eternal life and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave me them is greater than all and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. We are safe and secure in the hand of God tonight. If you are saved tonight, you are secure tonight. Hey, you're secure in his hand. I'm thankful for that because I've held on to some hands and they failed me. I've held on to some hands and walked through life for a while and the friendship fell apart and the hand departed, but I'm thankful that there's one in whom I am in, and no man is able to pluck me out. Mm. Now, if you get that, you'll be shouting all the way home. You won't even need to stop and put gas in your car, amen? Holy Spirit going to get you home like that, under 100 and between the ditches, amen? To be more than conquerors means we face the trials of life with the certainty. Hang on with me. To be more than conquerors mean we face the trials of life with the certainty that we are not alone. We have a mighty Father who fights for us, and we approach the darkest of valleys with confidence, knowing that nothing can happen to us that is not permitted by our loving Father. Now, let me pause for just a moment because I understand our human nature. We automatically assume the worst of the situations that is going to come to pass. Am I right? When something negative begins, we automatically assume the worst, and we begin to fret, and we begin to fear over a lot of that. But understand this, that God has not given us the spirit of fear. He has not given us that spirit of fear. Listen, we are are more than conquerors through him. And as we face these trials and as you go through life, young people, teenagers, as you graduate and move into the college or if you're going from college into the workforce and adults, as you're young adults, as you're having children and the, the fear is there and you're not sure where to go and adults, as you're facing the adulthood, amen. I, I would not wish adulthood on my worst enemy, Amen. Trials come every day to each one of us. And each one of us in this room are facing struggles and hardships that maybe nobody else in this room can relate to. You may feel that you're all alone, that nobody knows anything that you're going through and nobody can help you and they don't understand the depths of despair that you're in and you're on your last leg and you barely made it even in here tonight. You didn't even want to come tonight, but maybe, just maybe, the Holy Spirit put you here to remind you that you are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ who loved you and who died for you and who gave his life for you and because of that sacrifice on that cross, you can have an eternal life. But listen, even before we get to eternity, We have life now, and we can overcome some obstacles now. And as obstacles come in our way, we need to understand that there is one who goes with us, who is closer than a brother, who sticks closer than family, amen, who is always there with us, guiding us all along the way, and his name is the Lord Jesus Christ. You are not alone in your battles. You are not alone in your fights. You have one who goes before thee, and you have one who goes beside you. And understand that you are in the palm of his hand, and no man is able to pluck you out. We need to understand some of these things tonight. I love this Psalm 23 and verse Psalm 23. A lot of times we, we read these the Psalm 23 at a funeral, but it's not necessarily for the dead, it's for the alive, for the people who are alive. Listen to what it says in, in 23 and verse number Psalm 23 and verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. How can we face trials of this life? Well, let me go on and read a little bit further for you. For thou art with me. That's enough. But the Bible doesn't stop there. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Romans 8, 28, we just read that a moment ago, but understand this, that when trials do come and situations in our life arise and they cause us turmoil and they cause us to to look around and maybe even question God, why is this and why is this and why this and why this? And listen, it's okay to question because the disciples themselves questioned God multiple times, but God helped them. He helped them just like he helps us through his word. He reminds us of this in Romans 8, 28, for we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Understand this, that we have his promise of eternal life. 
John chapter number three, verse number 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Titus 1 and Chapter number one, verse number two, in hope of eternal life, which God cannot lie, promised before the world began. In 1 John chapter number five and verse number 11, and this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Listen to me here. Hang on with me. We have the presence. Not only do we have, not only do we have eternity, not only do we have our eternity secure in Jesus Christ, but we also have the presence of the almighty God every moment moment of every day until we see him face to face. And let me read just a few verses of scripture here for you in Psalm 139 and verse number 7 through 12. If you're ever going through some troubles and times, go to this Psalm, run to Psalm 139 and begin to read here. He says, whither shall I go from thy spirit or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there, Thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. Surely, if I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike unto thee. May I remind you what the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 31 and verse number 8. And the Lord, he it is that doth go before thee. He will be with thee. He will not fail thee, neither forsake thee. Fear not, neither be thou dismayed. Now hang on with me. Hebrews chapter number 13 and verse number 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness, but be content with such things ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Matthew 28 and verse number 20. Teaching, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. He goes with us. How can we face the trials that we go through every day? Understanding that we have eternal life through Jesus Christ, that we understand that we're more than conquerors because we know he has conquered death, hell, and the grave. We understand that. We put our identity in him. We put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And therefore, we're looking forward to that blessed hope one day when he calls us home. But until we get to that point, we need to understand a few things that not only are we eternally secure, that we are presently secure in him that he loves us and goes with us every step of the way. We need not worry about tomorrow. Only trust God because he is sovereign over everything. He sees our lives and he sees your lives and he knows exactly what you need and will provide along the way. No attempt of the enemy can steal the loving care of God from our lives and I'm thankful for that. That makes us more than conquerors through Jesus Christ who loved us. Now, I'm done tonight. I want to leave you with one last illustration here. I'm quick tonight. We're going to get you out of here early. You may not recognize this, but this is a portrait, a a, a statue, if you would, or a a rendition of a young man named Phidippides. Phidippides. How many of you here run marathons? Obviously, I'm not raising my hand. Ricky, put your hand down. Me and you both ain't running no marathon. If you see, hey, hang on, church. If you see me or Brother Ricky running, you better run. You better, I'm telling you right now, you better start running. Because there's one of two things. There's either something chasing us or there's tacos at the finish line. All right. Any marathon runners out here? Any, anybody ever run a marathon? Anybody ever been in a marathon before? None of y'all like to run. That's one. Y'all my people. That's all I'm talking about. I knew I was in good company tonight. <laughs> hey, man. I'm not a runner. I'm not a marathon runner. But you'll understand where you get the marathon race from here in just a moment. Let me take you back in time in the year 490 B.C. In the year 490 B.C., the Persian army, seeking to invade Greece, landed a large force 26 miles outside of Athens, And a huge army disembarked from their warships and they gathered on the plains of a place called Marathon. 
And as they gathered there, they prepared to attack the Greek army and establish their presence there in Europe. Now, the Greeks were outnumbered four to one. Those are not good odds, by the way, if you're a betting man. Four to one is not good, all right? The Greeks were outnumbered four to one, but they launched a surprise offensive uh, thrust against the Persians. And at the time, they, the, the plan almost seemed suicidal. With the odds being four to one, they began to launch this surprise attack. And by the end of the day, though, 6,400 Persian bodies lay dead on the field and marathon while only 192 Greeks lay dead. The odds were four to one, but yet we see the overwhelming victorious victory that they have here of 6,400 Persian bodies dead on the field while only 192 Greek soldiers had been killed. Now, sir, the surviving Persians fled to the sea, as one probably thought they should. If you lose 6,400 men and only, 100, and only 192 Greeks die and you, and you had them outnumbered four to one and they're taking you out like that, boys, you ought to retreat. So they took back, they hightailed it back to the sea there. They headed back south to Athens. And here's their hope. And they hoped that they would be able to circle back around and attack the city before the Greek army could reassemble themselves and get down there. With no word of the Greek victory, the Persians believed that the city would surrender just by them arriving there on the shore. But a young messenger named Pheidippus was called upon to run the distance to Athens. He was to carry the good news of the victory and warn the Athenians about the approaching Persian ships. And Pheidippus was already tired from another long run of 150 miles in two days, running from, running, running from Marathon, from Athens to, to Sparta, from Sparta back up to uh, Athens, and then from Athens to Marathon and fighting there in that battle. Now he is challenged with one more run. And this runner here, Phidippidus already ran 150 miles in two days and having fought in the heavy armor, yet, yet, but seeing the need to carry the truth to his countrymen, Phidippidus rose to the challenge, pushing himself past the normal limits of, a human, of the human endurance, and he ran the last 26 miles after doing all this in three days into Athens in about three hours. My boy was moving. You couldn't see me run a mile in three hours. Now, hang on. Ricky, once again, that's too loud of an amen. Now, hang on. He's running as fast as he can to carry the message of victory. And as he stumbled into the city, he gasped to the leaders three words, rejoice, we conquer. He makes it there before the Persian army, and he's in his last few breaths, he is exhausted from running 150 miles in two days and then fighting in the battle, 26 more mile run, and now he has given everything he got to deliver one simple message back there to the people in Athens was this, rejoice, we conquer, and dying there with his last final breaths. Hearing the news, the Athenians held until the army arrived and the battle was won and the enemy was defeated and no surrender was necessary. And Satan would have us to believe that the battle still rages between us and God. But can I remind you tonight that the battle's already been won, that Jesus has already got the victory over death, hell, and the grave. And we as Christians, as we as Christians with our last few breaths every single day, rejoice, we conquer in Jesus, we conquer. Conquer. We are more than conquerors through the Lord Jesus Christ. And we ought not wave defeat and give up with everything that comes our way, but keep pressing forward to the mark and holding on to the fort. Why? Because we know one day our king's coming back. And when he comes back, may he find us busy in his work, sharing the gospel, winning souls to, the, winning souls to him, and leading more and more people unto him. Why? Because he's worthy what he has done for us. We are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. And may we carry this message this week. Abel, you can start making your way up to the piano, every head bowed and every eye closed. May we tonight rejoice in Jesus, we conquer. Remember that it's not of our own works and it's nothing that we have done, but it's all because of what Jesus Christ has done for each one of us. 
Now, we said that this morning, that we, are, that we only find our identity in the Lord Jesus Christ. We find salvation in him, and he is the only way in which we can have an eternal home in heaven. Now, if there's someone here this evening and you've never put your faith and trust in him, you, 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 you've never stopped and came to that realization that you're in need of a Savior, may I implore you tonight to come to find him as your personal Savior. And you too can sound off, rejoice in Jesus we conquer. Because it's not you that's conquering death, it's not you that's conquering sin, but it's Jesus Christ. If you're watching by way of live stream, there'll be those that'll be standing by the phones here. You make that phone call and someone will answer. They'll be able to talk to you about your salvation. But I came tonight really to encourage the Christians, encourage each one of us to not give up, to not waver. May we stand firm on the foundation in which we've already found in the Lord Jesus Christ and not give up every time something small happens in our lives. But may we shrug it off. May we just let it be like water on a duck's back and let it just roll right off of our backs and keep on pressing on to the mark and pushing forward into what God has in store for each one of us. Understanding and knowing that he loves us and he cares for us and that he will not leave us nor forsake us. Maybe somebody tonight just needed that simple reminder right there that you're not alone in your battle. You're not alone where you sit. You're not alone in your struggles. But yet God is there and he loves you. As we said this morning, the great thing is we get to run to our Heavenly Father, whereby we, we can cry out, Abba, Father, in our time of need. Let's all stand with our heads bowed and our eyes closed just for a moment or so. If you need to do business this evening, you do business as God laid upon your heart. Whatever it is, you need salvation tonight, if you're unsure of your eternity, we'll have those that'll be standing by with Bibles and it will take them and show you through the Word of God how you can be saved tonight. Christians, I want to encourage you tonight to hold fast the fort. May we stand firm until the King comes, because He's coming. And may we be found faithful in His arrival. Not sitting on the sidelines, tormented by the devil, because Jesus Christ has overcome him. And therefore, we likewise are conquerors. Just a moment or so tonight, we won't prolong the invitation. If God has done anything in your heart, and if he spoke to you in any way, if you need to respond, I encourage you to respond to him. look up this way. Let's sing this chorus, Amazing Grace. You thankful for that amazing grace? We'll sing it out with everything you got on that. Here we go. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound and sing. Thank you for being here tonight. Listen, I, if anything tonight, I wanted to be an encouragement to you. Listen, let's hold fast to faith. Stay busy in the work of the Lord until he calls us home. Amen. Listen, we're going to be dismissed in a word of prayer, but what we're going to do is things a little bit differently tonight. All right? Many of you see all the backpacks we have up here, and we made mention of that this morning, that we have the privilege and the opportunity, and we're thankful for this opportunity for God for opening this door and orchestrating all this, our Barnabas ministry, we thank them, all those who had a part in that, you who sacrificially give unto that and be able to give these school supplies, but not only the school supplies, but the gospel. 
Ultimately, that is our goal, is to remind that these kids that there's a greater who in this world, and his name is Jesus Christ, and that's ultimately in whom we point them to. So what we're going to do tonight, we're going to do things a little bit different. We're going to have an altar prayer. Now, if, if you want to make your way up, you can go ahead and start making your way up. Abel, you'll start playing through a little bit. What we're going to do is we're going to spread out across this entire altar. There's, almost, there's a little over 300 backpacks here. So if you can get close enough to put a hand on a backpack, put a hand on one. If you can't get that close, if the altar's already full and you can't get close, just put a hand on, some, on somebody's back. If you want to make your way up, we'll have a time of altar prayer. We're going to pray over these backpacks that God would do the miraculous. With over 300 backpacks going to some elementary school kids and families. Some may not need the supplies, but what they, they may need is the gospel that's in here. So we're going to take just a moment. We're going to pray together as a church. We're going to pray together as a believing body in Christ that God would do something great with these backpacks. If we only see one child or one family come to Jesus over these, it would be worth the investment. It would be worth every penny. It would be worth every sacrifice that you've given. It'd be worth every dollar that you've spent just to see one come into an eternity and be able to live a victorious Christian life. Let's pray together as a church. All together, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we do thank you, Lord, so much for your mercy and for your grace. God, we thank you, Lord, for this time, Lord, that we get to gather around an old-fashioned altar. And Lord, not just an altar, but we get to gather around some backpacks, Lord, that have been packed with love and with care and supplies, but ultimately is packed with the gospel. The only true love that is shown in the world is through the gospel. And God, I pray, Lord, that you would take these backpacks, God, that they would land in the right hands of these young children, and God, that their families would be blessed because of the, not only the backpacks and the supplies, but God, I pray that some would find the truth contained therein, Lord, and their lives be radically changed because of one who was willing to sacrifice and pack a backpack with school supplies. God, as we near the start of a, a new school season, God, I pray, Lord, for each young person that is in school, whether it be elementary, middle, high school, or even college. God, I pray, Lord, that you would just use them right where they are, whether they're in public school or in a private school or in a Christian school. God, may they be that light. May they be that salt that shares the gospel, that spreads the good news, that Jesus saves, that Jesus saves. May they testify of your goodness and of your greatness. God, I pray, Lord, that you would take every backpack and use it for your honor and for your glory. And God, may you open the doors, Lord, for more avenues for us to be able to get into the public schools. We thank you for the Good News Club who's already established there. And God, I pray that you continue to do a great work through them. But God, may you expand it in the days to come. God, may you do greater and bigger things through us. And may we be willing tonight to be able to steadfast and hold fast unto the faith in which we have seen and got in through you. God, may we move forward in these days to come boldly, not in our own strength, but understanding that our strength comes from you. God, we love you and we thank you for this opportunity. God, may you bless each one of our church members and those that are here tonight. May you dismiss us now with your blessings. Keep us safe as we all go home. God, watch over us. Give us a great work week. And may we share this week what we've learned through your word. May we encourage others along the way. We love you, Lord. We pray all these things in Jesus' precious name. And all God's people said, amen, amen. Thank you for joining us today. We consider it an honor to serve you. And our prayer is that the service was a blessing and an encouragement to your life. If you were impacted today by the preaching of God's word, we encourage you to respond. If we can pray with you, or if you would like to make a decision today for Christ, please call us here at 704-327-5662. We have people waiting right now on the lines prepared to help you. Again, Thank you for joining us today, and we hope to welcome you again soon. Have a wonderful week.
of our guys, we have boxes right here in the baptistry. If you could grab a few of the boxes.